Good morning. morning. It's great to be here together in the Lord's house. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, uh, and so we we change our our focus, uh, and uh, these Sundays in Advent, we'll be going over uh, a sermon series called uh, The Clothing of the King, and we'll look at different uh, clothing from the Bible and how it points us Uh, to Christ. And today we'll be focusing on Genesis chapter 3 and the very first clothing provided for Adam and Eve. And we'll see how that uh, points us ultimately to Christ uh, and and the clothing of of his salvation that has been placed upon us in baptism. So that'll be our focus as we worship together this morning. We'll begin with our opening hymn number 331. sin would deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and happy salvation. To you, O Lord. I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exult over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed, Lord, our lost treasures. Glory be to 
the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, your King is coming to you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Happy New Church Year. The Old Testament reading for this first Sunday in Advent is from Genesis chapter 3. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread 
till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Corinthians chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to you, my God, always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. But what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Christ. You may be seated, and the children are welcome forward for the children's message. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. When you came into church today, did you notice anything different? Yeah. What was different? Okay, there's a Christmas Christmas tree up. Or anything else? We got the flower, the poinsettias, right? The very beautiful poinsettias. What else? The, the real tree has the ornaments. Okay, the ornaments, right? Very good. There's a manger. Okay, we got a couple different manger scenes. There's an angel up there. Yeah, there is, right? Um, what about where we usually have the baptismal font up there? Where is the baptismal font? Back there, right? When you walk in. That's where we used to have it for a long time, and, and we're putting it back there now. And, and one of the main reasons is it ties very well with what we're talking about these Sundays in Advent with the clothing of the king. Ultimately, what it's pointing us to is the fact that Jesus has clothed us with himself, right, with his righteousness. And it happened at your baptism. And so the reason that the 
the, yeah, the reason that the, the baptismal font is there is that every time you walk out of church and you walk into church, you have to go past that, right? And you can remember that you are baptized into Christ. You have been clothed with Christ's perfect righteousness that covers all of your sin, that forgives all your sin, and gives you the promise of eternal life in heaven. Right? And that's what we celebrate uh, this Advent season, okay? And so remember that as you, as you go forth out of here and when you come into church, uh, each time to remember that you are a baptized child of God and you have been clothed with Christ. Okay? Will you fold your hands and, and pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for clothing us with your Son and his salvation. Help us to focus on him this Advent season and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you guys so much for coming up. You can take one of these back to your seats. And our worship will continue with the hymn of the day. Mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, so much of Christmas is about the clothes. There's the ugly sweater that you'll wear at a party, or the coordinating outfits and the colors of the seasons displayed on the Christmas cards, or there's the matching pajamas that mom has picked out for Christmas Eve. We spend a great deal of time this time of year worrying about what to wear. And for good reason. The clothing of Christmas tells a story, right? 
It tells the world something of the excitement with which we celebrate, the meaning that we seek to incorporate, or the memories that we aim to make. And the same could be said of the scriptures. The clothing tells a story. Sure, it's easy to overlook, but as with so many other parts and pieces of God's word, these elements are not accidental. Indeed, these mentions of clothes, coverings, robes, and coats are filled with meaning. And as we'll learn throughout this Advent season, season, the clothes point us forward. They point us to the King himself, Jesus Christ. And so it starts early, all the way back in Genesis. In Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve are naked and afraid. We are mere moments into the life in the Garden of Eden, and they have thrown it all away. The first of billions to buy Satan's tired lie that we are better off out from under God's love and leadership. And our ancestors are being read the riot act by God. Their sin would unleash a tidal wave of divine judgment upon humanity. The biggest of which was their expulsion from the garden itself. Not only would life for mankind forever be frustrating and filled with death, they would no longer enjoy the presence of God. They and we would be left alone with our sin, made to reel from its effects apart from God, and feeling far from him whose love and care we need the most. Perhaps as you enter the holiday season, you're feeling the effects of Adam and Eve's fall from grace. And if so, you're certainly not alone. Despite the Christmas music that's been playing since even before Thanksgiving and the party invitations that are maybe piling up, the primary emotion of this season for many people is grief. It could be that you're grieving the absence of a loved one. Maybe this is the first Christmas since they've been gone. Or it could be grieving the financial pressures that you feel as we turn the corner into the, one of the most expensive times of the year. For others, this season brings a keen awareness of relational strain. Maybe the sibling you're not speaking to, the kid who you've disappointed, or the, uh, the in-law that, that you've hurt. Perhaps... What you're grieving is simply a long list of regrets that you carry. Regrets uh, and guilt over good things that you've left undone. Or terrible things in your past that you simply cannot undo. As we enter Advent, where and how are you feeling the effects of Genesis chapter 3 in your life? Think about that. As we look back in in Genesis, we see that there stands Adam and Eve naked and in shame. Their nudity at first, when they were unblemished by sin, was of little account. At most, a symbol of their purity and their safety in God's care. But now, corrupted by sin, sent out on their own and vulnerable to the evils of a broken world, as well as their own dysfunctional hearts, their nakedness is a liability, not to mention a source of shame serving to remind them of their fall from grace. So what does God do? Does he just send them off into the wilderness, cold, exposed, naked, afraid, and covered in guilt? No. No, Genesis states it plainly in verse 21. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Think about that. Let that sink in. God made clothes. 
God himself, with his own hands, fashioned a covering for both Adam and Eve. He was the very first fashion designer. But he didn't use fig leaves as Adam had done, and he didn't whip up a few yards of fabric from some cotton in the garden. No, he worked in leather. He used skin. Though they and all humanity had been sentenced to death, the very first to die would not be Adam or Eve, but another. It would be the first time blood would be shed in God's good world. The first time a final breath would be taken. The first time a once warm, vibrant body would grow cold. It would all be done in service of mankind's sin and shame. A third party, some truly innocent being, we're not told what kind of animal it was, only what it gave, would lose its life. So that guilty Adam and Eve could be sent into the unknown, completely covered. Now, what kind of God would cover over the sin and shame of a people who had rejected him? And what kind of God would not only cover their shame, but do so at such an awful cost and with his own two hands? Are you starting to see it? Is it coming into focus? How this moment points us ahead to Jesus. Here we have the first glimpses of the good news. Once Adam and Eve went on their way, their nakedness now covered in leather, God didn't give up on the business of making clothes and covering shame. This would only be the beginning. This would just be a glimpse. You see, in the very beginning... God had in mind your sin and your shame. He had in mind the vulnerability that we all feel, the pains and the problems associated with life in this sin-sick world that we are all feeling and fighting. And God would not be satisfied until we were all covered. And so he sent his son into the world, the one whose birth we eagerly await on this first week of Advent, to be our covering. And the clothing that God the Father makes for all mankind in Christ is cut from the same bolt as those original garments. God again works in flesh and blood. Through the loss of the most innocent lives, through the shedding of blood, through the letting out of a last breath, and through the extinguishing of a perfect life, forgiveness was fashioned. Forgiveness enough for the entire world. In the life and death of Jesus, there is now an outfit custom made and crafted by God for each and every one of you. And though we wander in a dark and very difficult world, in Christ we are wrapped in the mercy of God, protected from the harshest elements, namely the effects of our sin. We are covered, and we will survive. Now, I don't know exactly how you're feeling the vulnerability and difficulty of our broken world this Advent season. I don't know exactly what each and every one of you is going through. But what I do know is this. Whatever it is, whatever it is, It is covered by Jesus Christ. Now, you might think that it's too big, too awful, too evil. But the truth is, it's not. When God makes a covering, he covers completely. And just in case you need a refresher on exactly when God clothed you personally, in Jesus' shame-covering, sin-destroying garments of grace, let this be a reminder to you. It was back at your baptism. Again, like I told the kids, that's why we have the font back there now. To remind us as we enter and exit worship that we are God's beloved children. That we are covered with Christ's righteousness in baptism. Because at the very moment you encountered the water and the word, you were not only given a new name as a child of God. 
You were given a new life, eternal life. And you were given a new outfit. You were covered in grace and mercy, one for you in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So this season, Jesus is clothing you with his perfect righteousness. You are arrayed in something made just for you. Something that has come at a great cost and that has been in the works since the very beginning. And it will fill your journey toward Christmas with peace, with true peace. And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, rejoice. For you are wrapped in the oldest and most fashionable clothes of all, the clothes of Christ forgiveness. Amen. At this time, please stand as we confess our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, sustain your saints to the end as we enter another church year. Encourage the preachers of your word and all who hear that the testimony about Christ may be confirmed among us as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, give boldness and faithfulness to our synod president, our district president, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in Christ. Renew the faith and quicken the love of all Christians that we may be enriched in all speech and knowledge. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, grant your blessing to all marriages and keep all husbands and wives faithful to each other. Guide them as they care for their children entrusted to them. Bestow your loving care upon all children who have suffered abuse or neglect, as well as upon all who open their homes to children in foster care. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, behold our nation and its leaders and protect our armed forces taking them under your care and blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Visit us in your compassion, O Lord. Deliver the sick from their infirmity, the troubled from their afflictions, and the grieving from their sorrow, and the dying from their fear. Especially Chris Thompson, Max Linda Cleveland, Larry Whitrock, Ralph Wehmeyer, Monty Fennell, Jerry Graziano, Gene Heitman, Susan Burrell, Ernestine Cooley, William Cooley, Gary Roddick, Janice Hall, Justin C., and Mark Gibbs. May all who cry to you receive grace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Merciful Lord, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, entered Jerusalem to shouts and cheers of joy. Grant that we also may be stirred by word and sacraments to rejoice anew 
now and at his second advent. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, you have made us glad to enter into your presence, to hear the good news of our Savior and receive your gifts. Preserve your church against all her enemies, and lead us to walk in your ways and to follow your paths. And when Jesus returns in his glory, we may welcome him with glad hosannas. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we gather the offering. stand. To the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh, to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we ask you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also did the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
welcome to the Lord's table.
Please stand. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor 
and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn number 332. season that Christ took on flesh so that we would be able to be clothed with him and his glory now and for all of eternity. Uh, a few quick announcements uh, before we go forth from here. Uh, children's Christmas program practice uh, after worship here today. We look forward to uh, the 17th when they will uh, share with us uh, the message, uh, Peace Came to Earth. Um, also, if you'll, you'll notice on the back table at the information center that it is time to start thinking about church officers and, and how you can use your gifts and talents to serve the Lord here at Grace. Uh, so please look at that, consider that. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to talk to me at any time about that. Um, Christmas Parade, that'll be the whole summit Christmas Parade is uh, this coming uh, Saturday, December 9th at 2 o'clock. Uh, once again, our church will have a float in the parade, and so donations of candy as well as help uh, putting it together and, and also walking alongside the parade route, passing out candy are all needed. Um, if you have any questions on that, uh, please let me know. Uh, we'll look to have more information on that out uh, in the grace to you on Wednesday. Um, on Wednesday, our midweek Advent services begin. Uh, again, our, our theme for the midweek services and our children's Christmas program are the same. Uh, peace came to earth, so we look forward to that. We'll have a meal at 6 o'clock 
each Wednesday and then worship at 7. Uh, this week, the elders and council will pr be providing a meal. Uh, I believe we're doing a taco bar uh, for this first week. Uh, the LWML is taking care of the meal for uh, the second uh, midweek service, and then the third midweek service will be a traditional potluck meal. So we look forward to having some fellowship time uh, together uh, around a meal, and then worship at 7 on Wednesday. Um, Zoom Bible study, Wednesday morning at 10. Um, do we have any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Okay. Good morning. With the uh, uh, beautiful decorations in the church, it reminds me that Christmas is upon us, as well as the season of gift giving. And so the elders provide a monetary gift to pastor and family, as well as to uh, you know, church workers within the early childhood center. And typically, uh, seasonally, we open that up to the congregation if they would like to uh, assist in providing a monetary gift to pastor and family, as well as to uh, church members for their service and commitment. Uh, I have baskets out on the table. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to meet with your elder and provide that gift, you know, myself, Adam, Cole, Michael, Gary, and Lewis, uh, you can provide that anytime this month. That would be appreciated. So, thank you. In addition, uh, so real quick, uh, in the soccer season, I'm the coach at Calvary. I just want to make a, a special note that uh, we had a wonderful season. I see an alumnus in the, uh, in the crowd today. So I just want to comment that uh, we had a wonderful season, and the support of the Calvary is just uh, uh, everything that I would uh, like for that to be, uh, and that uh, we had so much success, so many wins uh, this season, but so much so much blessing uh, from the kids committed to, to the work uh, that we were so successful. We had four uh, nominated and awarded uh, all district uh, Board, and then one was regional, had a regional award, and then we had our first uh, state uh, uh, second, uh, second class uh, in the history of the soccer program. So uh, lots of things, great things going on uh, with athletics as well as the kids. So just wanted to make that. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. If I believe it's the winningest season in Calvary soccer history so far, so congratulations to Jay and, and the team, uh, and what a joy it is in, in all things that Calvary does, uh, even in soccer and athletics, to be able to do that in a Christ-centered way uh, and build Christian leaders, and so uh, exciting to hear all the good things going on there. Um, any other announcements this morning? Nicole? Elder Mandel is having their Christmas gathering this Thursday, 6 p.m. at the Winery. Okay. All women of the congregation. All right, very good. Any other announcements? All right. Have a wonderful day in the Lord.